Welcome here. This video tutorial, I show you how to make two very easy room transitions. One where you fade out plus fade in into another room and the another one, the one object will be scaled up or down. Two other transitions will be part of an advanced tutorial the next day. This is OneUp Indie and I am the developer of the indie game Clunky Source and the programmer slash pixel artist. So if you are new here and you want more, consider subscribing to my channel because I upload every two days a video. Let's explore how to pull this off very easy. So as you can see I have a very 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 easy setup. On the top left corner I have my camera setup which I discussed in, a, in other videos but for now it's not too important for you to know what it does. But basically it just sets the application surface and um, sets the width and the height of your screen and that's what it does and then for example we have this little box here and once the player just goes there it just jumps to the second room and then you can go and just jump back to the other one here we already have something but we shouldn't be having that one and that's it so how can we do this basically what you just have to um, imagine we just draw a big black box on top of everything and then well this is how the fading is going to be we do it with a sprite and this is a size of 64 and it's just basically a black box there's nothing special about this one so let's see how we can pull this off here so what do we need Basically, we just get two values and I call them snatch width and snatch height. And that I get from the camera which I put in, into the room. Um, and if you're using another system, here you just have to distinguish what kind of display you're using. And you could, for example, get display, get width and height. You can just get it with this function. And then, well, divide it by two because what we want to do is want to start the black box in the middle of the screen because it is centered as well and then it will be just stretched to fit our needs so so how can we do this so basically for now i just um, got the width and the height so we are absolutely in the middle and then i want to draw something which is this sprite and then I just go in here and explain what this code means, but it's very very easy and very very basic. So first of all, we just go for our rectangle, which I showed you. The sub image is zero because well, it only has one. And here, the middle position for the width and the middle position for the height. So it's in the absolute center of your GUI draw, not the regular draw, the GUI. That's why we need to snatch those values which are the display which is the application surface. And here I stretch it 40 times and 25 times. How do I get those values? Well, basically what I did and I wanted to support the biggest monitor for now and said, all right, this is the biggest width which I'm going to support. And here I divided by 64. The rectangle has a width and a height of 64. So I divided through the, the display width and I get 40 and this is how I get those values and the other one with the with the height of 25 well you can imagine how you get that and um, what is this this is the rotation of course there is no need for a rotation see why because well I wanted to have a pure black and then we have an alpha value and this alpha value is quite important because it defines how strong we are drawing on this screen for now we have an alpha value of zero because it starts with zero because well you cannot f you have to fade from zero to one how do we get there well with a little trick which i do with the timer so we have a timer of 40 and then in the step event we let it run down and once the timer is um less than zero we just do something with it and what do we do well we increase the alpha and we increase it by 0 0.01 if you want to do it faster you just put 
another value here or slower depending what you want to do. But generally those transitions uh, which are wiping the screen and making it appear again are quite fast. So these values are good but just play around and check what you need. So for example what we are doing now, for example we could put it into the room and check it out. Let's see how this looks like. And as you can see, it just fades out and then, well, nothing happens. So it already works pretty good. So we go into our little go to other room thing, which is just a collision, which is just checking for a collision with um, our player. And here it would normally just say, all right, once the collision is there, go to the next room. But we won't be doing that. We just create an instance uh, of our fade out black box. Let's go in here and put it in. The X and Y you can completely ignore because, well, it doesn't really matter where it is. It simply is a draw GUI, so it doesn't matter. So then you just play it on one of those instances layer and then it should be fine. And now the last thing we want to do is because, well, after we fade it out, we want to do something because we don't want to have a black screen and then nothing happens. So we just say, all right, what if our alpha is almost one then we want to do something we want to uh, room we go to number yep we go to our next room we just put it in here voila and it already should work and let's see if it does work fades out and we are into our, our new room so it does work but for example the thing from going black and instantly to another, to another screen well it doesn't look too good so basically we just need to have a sort of fade in because here we just go from zero to black and here we go from black to zero and this is basically just a copy of the same thing the same sprite same parameters but for now we start with an alpha value of 1 because we want it to be completely black we let the timer run down let's say for 40 steps because sometimes it's good because uh, uh, things are being loaded sometimes and then it would look ugly and here you give um, your game a little bit time to catch up and in the step event it simply decreases the alpha and once the alpha is almost zero, we want the instance to be destroyed because we don't really need it. And this is how you could, for example, do a fade in, uh, fade out. And then if you enter another room, just fade in and it per perfectly works. And so, for example, we could just go all right and put a one in here and we are perfectly fine. And so in every room we could do one on top of the left corner and once you enter the room it automatically starts and starts fading in this is a very neat effect you can do for your game and the other thing i wanted to show you is a similar version which has almost the same code but not the same here we don't have the 40 and 25 because we don't want it to be on the whole room we just want it to start from the middle point so we are starting in the middle with a scale and our scale is extremely extremely low so we just have this little dot in the middle and we want it to be zero because we don't even want to have this little black dot in the middle and once our timer runs down we have it to well an alpha of one then we just have this little black dot and then we just scale it up so this is how it would look like. Let's put it into the room so you can instantly see what I mean by that. Timer runs down and it just completely fills the screen. And of course you have to do it a little bit faster because it doesn't look too good. So we just go for higher values here. So you understand how this works and for example you say all right i wanted to do for example with another shape which for example a lot of games do that with a round shape you can do that of course too 
and bam, this is how it looks like. Pretty sweet. In the other tutorial, I will show you a few different ways how you do that, but they require surfaces and a little bit more knowledge. And they are um, things you, for example, see a lot of times in Super Mario World, but well, this is a thing I show you tomorrow. Well, that was it for today. Have a good one. One up indeed.